Hi everybody, Andy Snyder, Mud Puppy Pottery, and we are going to make a bowl. And let's do it from scratch. I have about a pound and a half of clay. It's real nice, speckled, high fire. We're going to take this up to cone six, and we're going to add some texture to it. And hopefully when we're done, it will look something like this. Nice, attractive, it's great for ice cream, cereal, salad, anything that you'd like to put in. Good multi-purpose. Nice way, one thing just to remember is that the feet on most anything you throw is not going to be uh, huge. And I use what are called wonder bags, which have this outer rim, which is made out of this pressed board, and it just has these two little places that go on the bat pins. And then you can just insert and pull out these nice little squares that sit right down. And you can leave them attached, and if you're doing things in multiples, and that's what I do, making things usually about 12 at a time, they're just wonderful to throw on. So let's get this centered. And the centering, it's 44 years I've been involved in playing in some form or other, and um, truth is, maybe the first 30 years that I've worked in clay, I just didn't center the same way that I do now, and I find that the way I do it now is just much, much improved. So the first thing you do, I work counterclockwise, even though I'm left-handed, sort of the right-handed way to do it. And you want the clay to come into the heel of your hand, your left hand, and the heel is going to control what is going to lubricate. The heel is going to control just horizontal, whereas this nice fatty part of my right hand, together to make one tool, is going to control the vertical. Horizontal, vertical, eventually the clay has nowhere to go but in between the two. Before I do that, what I like to do is cone up. All clay has platelets. They want to go in a certain direction. And I used to think, oh, the clay had a mind of its own, you know, wanted to go this way this day and that way that day. And the truth is, you really want to control it. So you go up, you go down, sometimes you want to do it twice. Let's do that right now. So you come up in pyramid fashion and push away from you, almost like a shifting lever on a car. And then when it comes down, it's pretty well centered. I like to hold a nice sponge in my right hand loop up on my hands, on my thumbs, and again, this is pushing down with my right hand, and in with my left hand, and I'm really setting the width of the foot of my bowl by going down to about that hockey puck size right there. And you can see, perfectly centered. Next thing I want to do is to create the inner portion. So I have two fingers that are pushing down and then push it pulling toward me and I'm lubricating them just by having the sponge you can see just right above my fingers trickling down and then don't ever feel that you're so good that you don't need to check how thick the foot of your piece is always be willing to check with your needle tool that's just about half an inch in truth, that's just a little bit thicker than I want this foot to be. So I'm going down just a little bit more before I pull out and then up. Because I don't want the bottom to be flat. I'm already creating the bit of that curve as it comes toward me. And one of the things that you want to know, it's always, always easier to expand the piece than to bring it in. And on this piece, what I really want to do is come up fairly vertical before I expand it at all. So let's go up. So I link my hands together. Anytime you can create one tool out of both your hands and all your little fingers and digits, it's just that much stronger. And up we go. In fact, I'm going to pull, I'm going to, with the back of my thumb, I'm going to make this little indent right underneath here. So I have a nice little recess where I can get right underneath it. I'm slowing the wheel down a little. I'm working at about 3 o'clock on the dial. And coming up pretty straight. 
Anytime that you just feel that you're losing that lubrication, go back and create a little bit more. So up it goes, and I'm not making it very thin yet, and I'll tell you why. That's because I'm going to add texture to this, and then we're going to stretch it out from the inside to the outside. You need to leave it a little bit thicker than you would ordinarily. So that's about where I want it, right about there. Always try out the inside. And now what you want to do, you want to trim down a little bit of this excess clay. Great Dolan tool with a nice sharp edge. Make a nice indent where you know you have some extra clay and you're going to trim that off anyways. And then take a nice straight metal rib. I have these wonderful Cheryl ribs that I just love. Really good stainless steel. And you're going to take that slurry off the outer edge. This is the last time you're going to touch that outer edge. If I stop, you can see it's nice and smooth finish. I then have a tool that I'm going to create texture with. And it has got a wonderful name. It's called Steve's Tool, created by some guy named Fred. I don't think so. In fact, I met Steve. He was working at Enseca a few years ago in Philadelphia at the Bailey's uh, exhibit. A wonderful guy, and he told me that I was one of the fortunate ones who still has a Steve's tool with a wooden handle. The new ones are made out of plastic. But they have different discs that you can inform your piece with. And this is the arrangement that I have here, where I have two rounded spikes and this nice flat one in the middle. And what I'm going to do is get the wheel going. And this is a form and function issue. I don't really want it right in the middle you think more about thirds. And in this case, let's go up a little bit. And I'm just going to let it go around and create a textured pattern in one part of the wheel. You see that well? And then in order to just be able to box that in, and if you would, so that it's not just this little textured pattern on its own, Let's create a couple of straight lines. One on the bottom with a nice soft shallow indent and one on the top. And you can see I'm just using a pointed wooden rib in order to do that. And you'll see that when I glaze that it gives me some real focal points for where I want to do so. And now the outer part is really done other than the lip. But I'm going to take a rounded uh, rib, and in this case it happens to be a coconut shell, which I love using. It's got nice curvature to it, sometimes more exaggerated on the edges than along the length of it. And from the inside, at a nice pace, we're going to start from the bottom to the outside edge, we're going to start to create that bowl shape. And it's not only just creating the shape, but if I slow down here for a moment, you'll see that it's stretching out the texture that I put onto the outer part of the bowl. Catch that okay? I'm going to do that just a little bit more. Let it sort of catch its breath. You want to make sure that the inside still has that nice curve to it, which it does. Out we go. With it. In fact, I think what we'll do will come up right about to there, and then I'm going to take the rib away, and I'm going to finish it with a nice piece of chamois cloth, just right on the upper edge. Let me just take a sponge and take that excess water out of the bottom, just like so. And then with a chamois cloth, just wrapped around the edge, I can finish it by compressing, wrapping it between my pointing fingers, and creating just a finish that gives it purpose and dimension to the bowl. And there it is. 
until I'm ready to trim. We'll just pop that right out. And there's a finished bowl.